In Berlin, there are a lot of project spaces, and there have been. I think they're getting better and better. Um, one interesting thing here is that they've always been kind of respected uh, on an equal footing, I would say, as institutions and galleries. The great thing about when, especially when Berlin was more affordable, is that people could start their own space for their own little pocket of friends and artists. And um, I think that the more people that do this uh, internationally, the better, because um, it doesn't make any sense to be waiting for uh, people to ask you to do shows. Um, you can get your own group of friends together and just start. And that's the only way you get better as well. Um, so I think that yeah, doing projects outside of the market is, is vital for all artists, no matter a, the age or level, because um, it gives you like a space that you control and no one can tell you, you can't do this, you can't do that. Um, so we started in 2011, um, and it's run by my wife Sol Calero and I, and um, we had started doing these little publications uh, where we would invite a bunch of different artists to just submit one color and one black and white image. It was very simple. Um, so it was kind of our little curatorial project. Yeah, basically this kind of fell into our hands in a way. There was a project space in the space before us and they were leaving and so we kind of took over the space and started afresh. Um, and I don't think we would have, we certainly wouldn't have had the money to rent a space outside of our home. So luckily this flat has like a separate storefront. And yeah, that kind of led to us brainstorming what we could do with it. So we called it Kinderhook in Caracas because I'm from Kinderhook, which is a small town in New York State, and Sol's from Caracas, Venezuela. And I think in Berlin, there's so many people from all over, especially in the art world, that uh, that you start seeing your your original hometown uh, in quite a different way after a long time of being outside, um, and your identity uh, shifts a bit. Uh, and you start wondering how, how your lens that you see things through uh, was created. And then, then our goal was just to put together shows in a very serious way with the artists that were um, help them in a way to focus and on one idea and put together like a really solid solo show. So we decided from the very start we don't want to do group shows, which I think is one big difference with us and other project spaces here. Um, because at that time, and it's still the case really, but at that time there was an especially chaotic summer of bad group shows where everyone was just, it was just all these lists of names and um, the artists didn't really care what work, they would just throw in whatever they had. Um, the, the curators didn't really care what the work was, they just wanted the names and the openings would be like, you know, 500 people and no one was looking at anything and we just thought this is not why we got into art. We, get, we, we tend to get very involved in the production of each show with the artist um, and especially before we were able to find any funding, which was the first bunch of years, um, we kind of made up for that with pure elbow grease, as they say, like pure effort, um, uh, us painting the walls, helping finish the works, helping install everything. As artists running a space, we also know that being an artist can be kind of lonely. For us personally, um, it's been great to really get in touch with other artists' practices and also share ideas. Also, you end up with lots of ideas that you would never use for yourself. With conglomerate, part of the logic was also coming from that, that some of us were doing a lot of installations and the installations um, were seen mostly online in the end in photos. So then we started thinking like how this lens of a, of a certain photographer was now deciding the aesthetics and the content of our space. And so we thought we'd like to go back to control it in a different way. And that's why we started thinking, instead of just thinking in nice installation shots, thinking like, how do you use the camera and video to really show what you want to do. And that way, the screen of the person becomes the primary source. And that's like how it's meant to be seen. Not that you're missing something in the past that you didn't get to go to. Because we, we also got a little bit tired of the grind of the gallery um, schedule. So we thought, which was not really 
how it turned out, that it could be less work if we start like a project with other people and it's more of a shared thing. But we all just are the same kind of workaholics and everyone in the con in conglomerate is, has that crazy drive. So we ended, it ended up being more work. But, um, but, it, but we were able to create a fresh new way of working, for our, at least for ourselves. That's right, folks. So it begins. It's all of fun. Conglomerate started with because uh, Christopher and Sol kind of approached myself and Daphne and Derek about creating this long-term, uh, open-ended um, project that we wanted to focus. They wanted to focus something on using video and kind of focus their whole program on on one thing for a year to to begin. Um, and together, the five of us all kind of came up with this format of uh, what Conglomerate is now, kind of this uh, con combination and mishmash and like conglomerate of different types of uh, video work and stuff that we make ourselves, stuff that uh, other people have contributed to us and, and various combinations uh, within that. Yeah, we, we decided to focus on the kind of television in the traditional sense uh, format where, you know, the, the TV that we all grew up with 35 years ago or whatever, um, or 30 years ago, um, was kind of more you turn on the TV and you see what's on and that's it. You have a few channels, you can change them uh, and you don't have too many options and we, were, and we really like that kind of directness that you just are kind of, uh, you know, you're a viewer and you're a passive viewer more or less. And so we wanted to create the conglomerate um, blocks in this way that it feels like you're watching TV in an old fashioned way and kind of shows end and the channel changes, but you're, it, you don't have this Netflix or your YouTube or any on demand ability. We wanted to create this consistent thing that you can watch from start to finish and it has a kind of uh, variations and kind of like a roller coaster of, of content that goes up and down in different directions and shakes you around and then then you're uh, done and you've ingested it. And we do that, uh, we draw from a lot of kind of popular or common TV tropes like we have a telenovela, a Spanish language telenovela, um, we have kind of a nature travel show called Around the World. Uh, we have the do-it-yourself woodworking show, the new domestic wood shop. Um, we have kind of a kids show slash uh, educational show, the OK Show. And we have a, kind of a uh, talking heads um, kind of thought piece show called uh, Behind the Beast, which is also involving animals and voices and things like that. And uh, and, uh, and much, much more. Um, and then, of course, all the cont contributions from the other artists, uh, which are all over the place. Some are some will kind of function as advertisements that kind of fit within the TV format, and other ones are kind of somewhat. I don't know. There's no traditional what, say, way to say what video art is, but there's some things that feel like there's like okay, this is video art, or some things are more narrative, or kind of out of out of the ordinary, and kind of just or some sort of kind of behind the scenes view of another production that someone's made that kind of gives a bit of insight into the production process and uh, and yeah, it kind of all over the place. Block four, our most recent block, uh, is made up of, of course, like all of them, many different pieces. Um, it uh, It's kind of special because it also includes the results of one of our exhibitions. Uh, we had an ex we were, conglomerate was invited to have an exhibition at Tender Pixel in London. And for that, we decided we would focus on creating an installation that acted as, uh, that would be then filmed to act as a station ID. The, we have the, re the returning shows that we make, um, for instance, Around the World or Desde El Jardin, 
the telenovela um, or the new, new domestic woodshop. These things kind of repeat uh, often in, in, in the different blocks. And so those are woven in, sprinkled in throughout. Uh, then there's contributions, like in this case, we had L.A. Cortinas providing something. We had Kevin Buersdorf. We had uh, Pascual Sisto. And, uh, and then we had the group uh, of Joseph Mainu, Aurora Sander, and Jessica Lauren Elizabeth Taylor, who collaborated and uh, and created the TV show Some Days, which is a kid's show. And that's special because that was a project that we invited them to do. We gave them a space at Kinderhook and Caracas and said, we want you to make a show and an exhibition, or an exhibition and a show, uh, that will be then filmed and put into Conglomerate's next block. We never would open a gallery because you kind of are stuck having to operate within the system because if you don't, it doesn't really it's not feasible, really. Whereas with our space, yeah, we could totally switch the whole method of operating for two years, and um, it's only led to positive things. So that experimentation um, in the forum is very important, I think. Two years ago, we did a project called A Soft Tragedy with Lorenzo Sandoval in collaboration with us, and we curated this, this outdoor storytelling so a project on the Landwehr Canal, which is like the canal that runs through Kreuzberg, Neukölln, and further, um, where we built a raft with Lorenzo and then had different stops on it where the different readers would read pieces. It was all based on the Telemachiad from the Odyssey. And so there were these like cantos, but they were symbolized by these different like pieces, artworks that were in the water, and also readings that. Um, a few different artists did. So that was kind of a more crazy project that we did. It also, like, like many of our things, got like, much, much bigger and crazier than we first imagined. A couple years ago we did a show called Inside the Archive of Oswaldo Lares, who is a Venezuelan, actually an architect, who as sort of a hobby in the 70s, mostly into the 80s, he was traveling all around Venezuela um, recording music in different towns. And he made a massive archive on a reel-to-reel -reel, um, recorder of all the different folk music around Venezuela that he could get to. Um, so his son, uh, Guillermo Lares, lived in Berlin, and um, we decided to do a project together to showcase the archive. So we, Kinder and Caracas worked with them, and then we designed the scenography. Um, so we created like a space that was more social to listen to the, to the music. And we also had a concert off-site at a, at a venue with some Venezuelan musicians.